Hey, welcome to another Fluttercourt Media thing. Today I am uh, working on building a new computer desk. Um, I'm moving out of my current place and I have the opportunity to finally build a computer desk that um, has the space and things that I want for my unusual setup. I've seen it in a couple of videos, my current setup. Uh, part of the mess, I've already started moving and just dump stuff. Normally there's a table right here and so I'd have like a three-sided rectangle. One far back there and I used to have laptops up on that shelf right up there. And then, like I said, there's a table right here that um, I would sit at and record videos and put other things on. I don't want to keep any of this, so we are going to build a new computer bench and yeah, I'd like to share it with you and maybe you guys will get some uh, inspiration or some tips on what not to do because I have no experience building things. I had shop back in like 97 and 98, so uh, the only power tool I own is a drill. Uh, so if I couldn't drill it, then I didn't build it which is why I have this jank thing right here. I used to have another monitor up here and uh, I honestly couldn't cut anything because I didn't have a saw, so I um, screwed stuff. <laughs> so come along for the journey and uh, hopefully we'll have a good time. So this is the current space. Right now I just have a table and a laptop, but I need to fit a couple desktops and a few more laptops and monitors, three monitors, and audio recording equipment all in here. So I'm thinking I'll do a corner desk here to about right there. There's a closet there that we need to be mindful of. Put the three monitors there have this area for uh, laptops and stuff with HDMI cables running to the monitors audio equipment right there and uh, actually I'll put like at my other setup I will put the laptops up on a higher platform so that'll give me an entire bench to work on there. Now I do enjoy the depth of this table I have here and that is at uh, 24 inches deep Height, it could be down just a scotch, so this is 29 inches, so I'm thinking 28 inches at the top. All right, so after a lot of trial and error, I came up with this design. Maximizes the amount of space while still allowing access to the windows there and allows this closet to open here so it gives me two extra feet. I could put a shelf up here or something for routers or something like that. This piece right here is either going to be this table or um, I'll build something that rolls. And that way I can scooch it closer to me to the main sitting area when I'm recording so that when I'm standing right where I am right here I can sit here and still be in focus and so I can scooch this back so I'll show you what that would look like right here so there's the table and so that's not very far away so that way I can move it around and then over here this I sat with for a long time trying to figure out I wanted to give room for my chair to sit up here with the arms um, but not cut it off so much that I couldn't put a monitor there and a monitor there and then my big curved monitor back there. So I came up with about a 20 degree angle. Right there is 20 degrees. <laughs> uh, with a 45 degree angle cut there. And the way I'm going to do this is this is either going to be an 8 foot long piece and then a 5 foot long to that corner. I'll lop that off at 45 degrees and tack on that 45 degrees there or so that'd be 10 feet or 
depending on what's available to purchase, I'll go um, seven feet, and then that would be well seven my eight six feet. So anyway, that's that's the game plan. So I'll be able to put audio equipment here. Sorry about the focus. My finger keeps drawing the focus. Laptops over here up on a shelf, and then this I'll be able to spin around and move around as needed. So. Mapping it out with the tape really helped me figure out what I was going to do because I knew I wanted a corner area not at 90 degrees and so it took a long time and I had to go back to remembering geometry uh -huh. and use, I don't know what the hardware term for this is, but I'm going to call it a protractor to measure out my angles and uh, it makes me realize how much I forgot about that. But by mapping it out I can see how much room I'm going to have and uh, how it's going to fit with the rest of the space so like there's where the table end that's why it has to be movable because that would cut off so much spice there's nothing left to do now but to go to the lumber yard all right so we just got out of menards end up going with eight by two by i think it's three quarters of an inch two boards and yes i did measure my car before i put these in here just perfect and then a whole bunch of uh, 2 by 4 by 8s and some metal hardware and such. So I've got my two boards set up here. And I came in and drew the 45 degree angle right across this corner. And then out here on a 20 degree angle. And this one I had to measure twice because I got it wrong. And uh, I just picked 20 degrees as an arbitrary number. Um, it felt good when I was sitting there with the tape. As you can see right there. And so that way, when I scooch up, I have a flat area here. Lots of room back there. And then room for my chair arms here. And if you're wondering why I don't do a 45 degree angle straight back that way, well one, I'd have to cut, remember the corner pieces that are going right there? Um, this board would not be long enough one, both of them would not be long enough to just chop off 45 degrees. I'd have to buy an extra board or well, I'd have to take these 45 degrees and stick it on there. And while that's okay, if I can keep it all one piece, it's going to be slightly stronger. I'm going to have to tack on the, the 45 degree over here. And two, if I put something right there, that's going to be a weak spot. I'm going to have my big heavy monitor there. So I'm going to be working all the time. Um, I'd just rather have it off here, so for stability's sake, just so it's not right down the middle. So, I got my cuts done. Uh, it's not perfect, but uh, it's pretty close. So I have it assembled upside down. Uh, because what I'm going to do is use these brackets to really hold this piece in place. And this is the part that uh, I kind of screwed up on. And thinking back, it was probably stupid to cut right on the corner. Just means that this overhangs a little bit back here. Now it'll be an easier cut to make rather than trying to clean this up. So we'll line this up and then chop that off. But so I'm gonna screw all these in so we have the nice and tight so I can get uh, straight lines on everything and uh, clean up the cuts and then we will start cutting the legs and mounting the legs. All right, well, I have all the cutting done and fit test fit everything and got the uh, legs cut there. So now I'm going to stain them. Uh, I went and blew all the dust off of those. I sanded each board. So time to stain. And now flip this over and stain that. And that's going to take about six hours to dry or so. 
and then we'll get to adding a polyurethane coat to waterproof it at the end. So you have to make sure you stir up your stain. This was a brown color till I started stirring and it turned into the gray that this is actually going to end up being. It's called Weathered Oak 270, not sponsored by Minwax. However, you should probably not use your brush because now the end of my brush is gross. <laughs> I think you get the point. Well, here's the final piece. All sanded down and everything, but the more I looked at it and worked with it, uh, the more I'm not so sure I want to go about staining and sealing it. Um, for one thing, as maybe probably predicted, uh, this gap is slightly bigger than expected. Uh, didn't quite get it sealed when I tightened the back. This front part kind of popped open. And um, the other thing is, well, the color I chose to stain, I'm not sure I like so much. Um, it's a gray. I thought the gray would look really nice, but I've got uh, little pits in this. It's not obviously finishing wood, it's building wood. Plus, I still would have to stain it and polyurethane waterproof it. So I'm thinking about going the route of um, what the 8-bit guy did, and I'll have his video right up here, where he put uh, tile on it, a uh, little laminate tile and glued it down. And that would cover up all of the gaps and everything and uh, make it waterproof as well and just smooth everything out. So I'm gonna to go to the store again and see about uh, how much a bunch of tile would be and see if that's the route I want to go. All right, so these are the tiles I'm talking about. Uh, further down we go, the cheaper they get. Now this one, when I touch it, it feels like an actual floor. And I don't want that, because I'll be thinking that I'm touching a dirty floor all the time. So I'm thinking maybe something around here that's a little uh, textured might be nice. Now these wooden tiles here are tempting, but um, I think trying to line up the wood and stuff, it just won't look very good. Plus it's very textured, and so it would require a mouse pad no matter where I went because it's so textured. However, this one here has a nice model pattern and it's really smooth. I could get away with not using a mouse pad. I came all the way down here to these cheap ones. Well, this is smooth and clean, but like I said, it um, feels like a floor, especially with this dirt on there, and I won't be touching that. So I think we're gonna go with, with this one right here. This one I like up here as well, but uh, again, it's really textured, and I have several computers and don't wanna have to have mouse pads for all of them or move my mouse pad around. So if I just need one, even though I prefer not to at all. Um, that's fine, and then the rest of the mice around the desk should work just fine on this. So each one has 30 floor tiles at a foot apiece. It's 30 square feet. Assuming I hadn't cut anything out, I would need 32 feet. If I decided to do the edges as well, I need more. Now the price is, fortunately it's on sale. That is literally 89 times 30, so I don't get a discount buying a bunch, so I'm going to just pick up a handful more for extras and uh, be good to go. The nice thing about these are they're self-adhesive, so I don't have to deal with glue. All right, well, so all that sanding work uh, turned out to be pointless since I'm going to put tile on it, but boy, it sure is smooth. Nothing left to do now, uh, but the tiles are purchased and to give this one more wipe off, get all the dust off of it, and pack up and uh, disassemble and move it inside so we can finally assemble it and then the last bit will be um, putting the tiles on and so this will probably take me the rest of the night. Well this turned out to be uh, longer than I expected. Um, it's going to turn into a two-parter just because there turned out to be more footage than I would originally planned for. But uh, I'm editing both parts of the video together so the second half will probably be up tomorrow. As always if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up. It helps other people find it on the big huge internet and uh, after you're done with that please subscribe because it helps the channel channel to continue to grow 
and I'm really trying to hit that 100 subscriber mark. Until next time, thanks for watching.